Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Mindy here, and I wanted to talk about something a little bit different today. Today I wanted to talk about blind buy fails. And if you're anything like me, throughout this pandemic, you've probably also had some blind buys that may have worked out, or maybe they didn't, like the ones I'm about to talk about today. It's hard to talk about our fails. It's so much more fun to talk about our successful blind buys, um, but in the event that this helps anyone out to understand those fragrances that didn't work out for me, I wanted to share them with you. I personally find it difficult talking about a failed fragrance buy simply because your taste might be different than mine. My idea of a fail might be your idea of a masterpiece, and there is a ton of artistry and work that goes into a fragrance. So when I say that these are fails, I don't mean fails in the sense that they're bad fragrances. They just didn't work out for me and I find myself reaching for other fragrances more than these. And actually all of them are beautiful fragrances. Um, many of them are very lovely and I'd love to smell them on other people. They just simply didn't work out with my skin or my chemistry or I didn't like wearing them for the entire day. And as I've mentioned in the past, I do have a lot of fragrances in my collection that had to grow on me. Mon Guerlain, for example, I really had to acclimate to that scent. Spiritueuse du Bleu Vigny, La Belle was not a love at first sniff, and I have many others. So most of these I've tried out long enough to realize that they're not really for me, um, but I am keeping the door open with a couple of these because, as I mentioned, they are nice fragrances and I think a lot of people would actually enjoy a lot of these that I'll talk about today. I've learned three really awesome things through my fragrance journey over the past year and a half. The first is that fragrance reviews are incredible. Whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Fragrantica, wherever it is, it is really awesome to be able to go and see other people's opinions and experience on a fragrance because there have been so many times where I've received a fragrance that I bought and I felt like I've already smelled it because the reviews were so awesome on that particular fragrance. Second is that I definitely have a type. I tend to lean towards oriental vanillas. I really love gourmand fragrances, but that doesn't mean that I limit myself to those. Many of these as I was exploring are outside of that realm and maybe why I don't love them. Um, but, but some of them are within those categories and I just didn't like them for whatever reason. So um, I tend to gravitate towards gourmands, oriental vanillas, sweet fragrances, but my tastes are very much evolving and it'll be interesting to see what my collection looks like in a year and two years from now because I do see my taste changing as I explore. The third thing that I've learned through my fragrance journey is to sample first. Um, in some cases that's not absolutely necessary, for example, I know I love the DNA of La Via Belle, they could probably come out with another flanker, and there's a good chance that I'll like it. But that's not the case all of the time. There are a lot of fragrance profiles that I don't love, and many of them here fall into that oriental vanilla category, or they are gourmands and they just didn't work out for me. Um, so I've sort of learned through experience that there are certain note profiles that I like, there are certain accords that I like, but still I need to sample first to make sure I like a fragrance, especially if it falls into the niche category where it could be a little bit more pricey. I wanna make sure I love it before I buy it. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started and talk about my blind buy fails. The first fragrance that I wanted to talk about today is Ragba by Latafa. And I don't know if you guys remember, but last year there was tons of hype on this fragrance and everybody was talking about it and a lot of people loved it. This is a very woody, very woody, there's oud in this fragrance, vanilla, sort of a gourmandish fragrance. It is spicy to my nose and the spiciness is pretty powerful to me. This is the type of fragrance that I would love to smell on a man. This is actually classified by most people on Fragrantica as leaning feminine, but to my nose, it leans a little bit more masculine. This fragrance actually reminds me if you were to go up to the mountains and reserve a cabin and there's a wood fireplace and you feel that woodiness and smokiness sort of filling up the room, this would be a beautiful scent. 
um, from that angle if you like that sort of fragrance profile. I do think this would be something that a lot of people would truly enjoy, but it didn't work out for me. Just a little too heavy on the woodiness and something that I probably wouldn't wear on a day-to-day -day basis. Another fragrance that I thought I would fall absolutely head over heels for is Roberto Cavalli by Roberto Cavalli. And the base notes in this fragrance, benzoin, tonka bean, and vanilla, are in many other fragrances that I absolutely love. So I thought for sure this would be a slam dunk fragrance for me, but it was not. There's something heavy in this fragrance, some sort of floral aspects, possibly the African orange flower, that is so heavy to my nose that I can hardly tolerate it. Um, there's also sort of a balsamic feel to it, and this doesn't smell like anything else I've ever smelled before. But after trying it for a while, this just simply isn't for me. It's almost too perfumey, if that makes sense. Um, fragrances that have too much florals to me can come off as too perfumey, and this just happens to be one that did not work for my skin. Another blind buy that didn't work out for me is Orosima by Ted Lapidus, and this is actually a very inexpensive fragrance, so the blind buy for this one was very low risk, um, and it actually is a very pleasant smell. It has peach, bamboo leaf, grapefruit, it has caramel, patchouli, and musk, and it is a nice scent. This isn't one that I hate, it's just one that I wore for the entire day and I didn't find myself enjoying and I don't find myself reaching for. Again, this is a fairly inexpensive fragrance, so if it's one that you wanted to try, it would come at very low risk, but to my nose, this just isn't one that works out for me. There's something sort of lingering in the background that I find to be a little bit cloying and just simply didn't work out for me. But I think other people would enjoy this and I actually wouldn't mind smelling this on somebody else. I think I'd actually find it appealing. So in my case, it didn't work out, but others might really enjoy this fragrance. Now another blind buy that I thought I'd absolutely love based on its comparisons to Coco Mademoiselle Intense is Miss Dior Le Parfum. And this fragrance has mandarin orange, Turkish rose, Bulgarian rose, patchouli, amber, and vanilla. And again, I thought for sure I would love this one. Now, this is a dense fragrance, and if you're used to a lot of sweetness in your fragrances, or you appreciate a lot of sweetness in your fragrance, you're not gonna get that from this one. I personally love a lot of other fragrances from the Miss Dior line. I love Absolutely Blooming. I love the EDT. This one was just a little bit heavy for my taste, and it didn't have any sweetness to balance out some of that heaviness that I sense. Now, if you enjoy some of the more vintage compositions, for example, if you like Coco by Chanel, I think this might be one that you'd actually enjoy and you might want to try out. Again, a nice smelling fragrance, but a little bit heavier, um, a little lacking in the sweetness category, uh, so it didn't work for me, but I think a lot of people would truly enjoy this fragrance. Miss Dior Le Parfum. Another fragrance that absolutely gutted me is Ely Saab Le Parfum Intense. And this fragrance is very heavily loved. And I went back and forth for hours and hours trying to decide if I loved it or if I hated it. And I think I landed sort of in the middle. It's a nice fragrance, it's sweet, it's syrupy, it's definitely sort of white florals, but you get the warmth and the honey in this fragrance is absolutely exquisite. For me, I think I'm getting a lot of orange blossom and I just don't particularly love that note in some fragrances. But I do think a lot of people would really enjoy this fragrance. Again, it is very, very loved in the fragrance community and one that just simply didn't work on my skin. I felt it to be a little heavy on the flowers, a little heavy on the white floral as I wore it through the day, and one that just didn't work out for me. This is one that I'm not gonna write off right now. I think I'm gonna keep wearing it and see if my tastes change to love this fragrance, but for now, it is not a love. Okay, another fragrance that didn't work out as a blind buy for me is Between Us by One Direction. And this is often compared to Flower Bomb. And I think what I was hoping when I bought this fragrance was that it would be a heavier, longer lasting version of Flower Bomb. At least that was my hope. 
I've spoke about this before. I wish that Flower Bomb would come back with their Extreme or their Flower Bomb Explosion. It's such a beautiful fragrance, but for me it's a little bit too light. And I was sort of hoping this would be the heavier, more powerful version of Flower Bomb. And this is a nice fragrance. It's very inexpensive, so I think for somebody who wanted to blind buy this and get the Flower Bomb vibe, this might be a good alternative. To me, it does smell like Flower Bomb. It's very similar. It might be a little bit less sweet, maybe a little bit heavier on the woods, but it is close. And I see why people compare this fragrance. It didn't necessarily satisfy that need that I was looking for for a heavier, longer lasting flower bomb. So not one that I really reach for all that often because I do have the original, um, but certainly one that I think some people would really enjoy because of that association with flower bomb. Another fragrance that I completely bought into the hype with last year is Casablanca by Swiss Arabian. And this is slightly reminiscent of Midnight Shimmer. It's slightly reminiscent of La Belle but it does have its own identity. It's apple, it's caramel, it's vanillic, and this one is heavy. It can take over a room. It sort of dries down to sort of a woodsy fragrance, um, and it's nice, it's very, very nice. In fact, I really debated even having this on my list. This is one that I've gotten compliments in my household from the younger members of my family, and one that I think I'll hold on to for now. While it does remind me of La Belle in a way, and I do prefer La Belle to this, uh, La Belle has pear, this has apple, and this may be a little bit more sweet, maybe a little bit more sour. Um, I do see the value in keeping this in my collection for now and continuing to explore it to see if my love for it grows. Again, that's Casablanca by Swiss Arabian. Another fragrance that I didn't love near as much as I thought I would is La Imperatrice 3 by Dolce & Gabbana. And this one is sort of a fresh, fruity, aquatic fragrance. I definitely get the rhubarb and the watermelon, and it's just like a mixture of fruits. I think people compare this sometimes to a fruit cocktail. And to me, this smells like sort of a fresh, fruity shampoo. I think a lot of people would love this fragrance. I think the fruitiness is nice and it is sweet. It comes off a little sharp, it comes off a little crisp to my nose, but uh, I do see a lot of people enjoying this fragrance. Probably not one that I'll reach for in the future all that often. Maybe a little bit more in the summer, but I do tend to have fresh fragrances that I prefer more than this one. Again, that's Dolce & Gabbana, Lit Imperatrice 3. Another fragrance that I've classified in my Blind by Fails is Rose Extase by Nina Ricci. And this was created by Francis Kirkjohn. It's actually a very nice scent. It's sweet, it's got rose, it's got raspberry lingering in the background. And a lot of people compare this to Delina. And for somebody who's turned off by Delina's tartness, sort of that sour punch that you get on initial spray, I think this might be an alternative for you. I do think a lot of people would really, really enjoy this scent. For me, the comparison to Delina, in my case, I reach for Lady Diana. I do have a preference for that fragrance over Rose Extase, so this is not one that I reach for on a regular basis. Again, I think this might be a nice alternative if you're not in love with Delina. This would be one that you might want to try out to get sort of that sweetness and that similar vibe, but this one is not for me and one that I don't find myself reaching for. Now another fragrance that I wanted to talk about briefly is Janun Noor by Al Haramain. And this does fall into my blind buy fails at this moment in time, but that could change. This fragrance is unique. It is different than anything I've ever smelled and it is actually quite unusual. A lot of people compare this to Dama Bianca by Zerjoff, which I don't know, I've never smelled that fragrance, but this one has kumquat in it, which is unique. I haven't seen that in a fragrance before. It also has orris root, it has lily of the valley, jasmine, vanilla, musk, sandalwood, cedar, and you get the woodiness from it. It's sort of a powdery, woody, alluring fragrance and unique. I find that there's a little bit of a mysterious aspect to this fragrance because I don't know what I'm smelling and it's just different. I do think a lot of people would really enjoy this. I think a lot of people talk about this frequently in the comparison to Dama Bianca and I think a lot of people really do love this one. So it didn't work out for me, but I think this one would work out for a lot of people. 
Again, that's Janine Noor by Al Haramain. Now the next fragrance on my list that I'm considering a blind buy fail is Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy. And this one is sweet, it's floral, it's fruity, and you've probably smelled this before. I think most people would recognize this fragrance. Uh, they probably smelled it before. It is a very nice fragrance. I think this is a lovely fragrance. A lot of people would enjoy this. Some people may say that this is a little juvenile. I could see that. I think you wear whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, but the reason I'm considering this a blind buy fail is simply for the reason that I meant to buy Juicy Couture Gold Couture. And this one I wanted for that caramel, vanillic scent. And I prefer this over the Juicy Couture. And <laughs> I don't know if you guys dealt with this Early on in my fragrance journey, I felt overwhelmed by the sheer volume of flankers. If you look at Coco Mademoiselle, there's you know, five flankers of Coco Mademoiselle. There's tons of Mon Guerlains. There's a whole bunch of Monsieurs. And I feel like somebody who's new in their fragrance journey could easily get confused by all of the flankers that are out there. And just like me, ended up buying the wrong fragrance because you simply didn't know the difference. So I learned my lesson here. I did end up getting Gold Couture in my collection and I like them both, but I definitely have a preference for this one. Another fragrance that I'm even reluctant to bring up on this list is Alien by Mugler. And I happen to know that a lot of people absolutely love this fragrance. In fact, I completely expected it to love it by the ratings and the reviews that are out there. But this was not a love for me. It's very heavy on the jasmine, it's sort of woody, and I've heard someone describe this fragrance so perfectly before when they said that this fragrance smells like you would expect the color purple to smell. I completely agree with this. This feels purple, it smells purple to me, and I think that was a really good description for this fragrance. Sometimes when I wear Alien, I feel like the fragrance wears me, I don't wear it. I've heard before many times that you're either an angel person or you're an alien person. And while I'm still sort of exploring the angels that I like, I absolutely love Angel Muse, so I must fall more into that camp at this point in time. But this is not a fragrance that I'm gonna give up on. I do like it, and this is one that I think would smell lovely on somebody else. It just doesn't work with my skin chemistry, and we'll see. Maybe in the future this will be a love. Stay tuned for that. Uh, that's Alien by Mugler. Okay, the last fragrance that I wanted to talk about that I've classified as a blind buy fail is Valentino Donna. And I really hesitate even keeping this as a blind buy fail because it is a beautiful scent. It's a sweet, leathery iris, and the iris is very well done in this fragrance. It is pretty. I absolutely love iris in men's fragrances as well. I just think it's such a beautiful note and it's done very nicely in this fragrance. This is classy, it's sophisticated. I could see a very elegant woman wearing this fragrance and the bottle is absolutely stunning. It just has an element of sophistication and I think this is probably one I need to go back and revisit a little bit more because I do truly enjoy the scent. My issue is that I don't find myself reaching for it near enough. And if I have a fragrance in my collection, I'd really like to love it. I wanna be pulling from fragrances that I absolutely love on my shelves instead of those that I sort of like. Okay guys, that's my list of blind by fails. These are all fragrances that I don't hate, but I just haven't loved. I haven't been wearing them enough. I haven't been reaching for them. And so they've gone a little bit abandoned in my collection. I hate to talk about fails because I think it's so much more fun talking about our blind buy successes, but I wanted to share this video in the event that it helps somebody else make a decision on some of these perfumes in my list. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. See you soon.